Hi folks, and welcome to the uh, the next episode here. I think this is um, 12 of the Tutorial Fortress series. Now, someone was interrupted by a troglodyte. How many of those were around? There's only one. Pond grabbers. Those suck. Because they live underground in the... Uh, in the water, but apparently that troglodyte's interrupting people, so squad C, kill from list. Where's the troglodyte? Uh, gone apparently, someone killed it, I guess. Human crossbowman, nice. All right, looks like there's actually uh, still some of the, the adventurers dead down there. Construct building, oh yeah, you're constructing that, nice. Have any of our miners actually done the uh, underbridge yet? They haven't. They have access to it, but I guess they're just busy with uh, stockpile work for now. We're not in any major hurry to expand that, or I would up the priority. I just want to keep an eye on it for when it is done. It's going to take a couple of years before underground stuff is ready. And he's created a high wood cabinet. Let's take a look here. Uh, where is the high wood cabinet? I do not see it. Maybe we need to wait a second. Now I saw that she claimed it as a family heirloom. I wonder if that means it's just not going to show up on our artifact list. Nice. So the, uh, the grand hall is ready. People are just going to be chilling out in there. And the floors are done up here, so we're going to build our walls. Like I said, the interior walls we're actually going to make out of wood, which is a bit of an odd one for us. Hmm. I have perceived a problem. I thought we had three tiles in the middle. We only have two. So we might have to make this just a dormitory and not have real, um, real rooms up here. We'll just have these, like, cool wooden dividers. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. We'll roll with that. So that means we're going to have to build big C walls. And just two by two here, we're going to put these high wood bits. Yeah, that'll work. And then build big C floor. And like I said, we're going to go for this weird mixture of uh, wood and blocks. Which I think could look quite cool when it's done. And uh, if the elves ever ask for a place to stay, they can stay up in the giant wooden room. Because we respect our elves, and we know that they love being near wood. Those pond grabbers could be a problem. It's a good job we don't actually have to fight all these things, and that we have the other dudes to come down and do it for us. Although we're too busy trying to kill each other, so... God, that is a lot of chickens. Our pigs have been exceptionally slow to breed, actually. We're four years in and we've only had two or three... Two or three, uh, yeah, I think actually four piglets. But you know what? This is just too many chicks. We're going to go to animals. And we're going to start slaughtering chicks. Now, we're going to get little to nothing for this in terms of meat or leather or even usable bone but the fact of the matter is we have so goddamn many of these things 
that they're actually slowing slowing down our um, slowing down our progress just by how much they're slowing down the um, yeah just by how much they're slowing down the frame rate they're actually slowing down our progress I ordered a bunch of the cats to be uh, slaughtered as well which should up our uh, our food but we're doing okay on food at the moment we're never really pulling too far ahead of our needs, but we always have enough, at least in recent memory. Who are you, Mr. Crazy Beard Man? You are Dishmab a medic guy. that makes sense. The medics are always just getting drunk in the dining hall. So the first of the wooden walls has been built, and that actually looks... I really like the way that wall looks. What's everyone doing right now? Storing in bins, I'm guessing. Yep. And a few constructing buildings. Oh, I really like the way that floor looks as well. I don't normally build in um, wood in Dwarf Fortress. I normally just... Sm uh, melt it down into bars of uh, charcoal and then use that for uh, melting metal and I, I I have built more often out of metal than I have out of wood speaking of I think at this point we can just go full out on the wood and on the smelting galena ore we can just ask that to just go on forever at this point. Because by the time we start to run low on wood, we'll have another wave of trees on the surface. And if we're running really low, we've started to accrue fungi wood downstairs in the, uh, the other area. Now once the floor's done, we are going to order the construction of walls. In fact, what I'm going to do while I remember is order the corners done now. And uh, yeah, you know what? We're going to build this out of wood as well. We're going to do this weird hybrid kind of thing. You know what? We're going to uh, actually, over here, cancel that piece of floor. And we're going to build another upward stairwell. This is... Um, gonna head up to the roof so that we can actually roof this building off and make the upstairs we need more goods what are we making this time armor stands we can build a couple of armor stands not a problem mr. mayor and we'll build them a couple of weapon racks too it's nice to see the craft area doing so well think by now we can't press some honeycomb why not needs honey producing product do have we not been tending our bees where's my beekeeper we have not been tending the bee oh we have There's one guy supposed to have been but I'm guessing he's been busy with other things so we'll add another beekeeper hopefully that'll get it done or maybe they can't maybe they don't have enough jugs to get the honey out in the first place, so is it this one? Rock jug? Maybe some rock jugs too. We've got more coffins being built. We should uh, keep on top of that with how often we lose people in this fortress. Use for burial, use for burial. There we are. A gander, a legionnaire, a surf. Apparently we're also burying pets in those tombs, which was an option we did have enabled, so it isn't surprising really. Dwarven child just kind of hanging around. Someone is actively melting Scalina ore and making the charcoal, so that's pretty nice to see. Let 
Yeah, there's masterpiece weapon rack. Cool beans. How's this going up here? The upstairs are built. Nice. And again, I know it looks weird, but I really like the way this room's shaping up, I think. Now, I increased the population cap, but I've realized I haven't restarted the game. So, uh, just as a, a side note technical thing, if you want the population cap to be adjusted, you do have to restart your game to apply it. So, we're going to build ourselves a downstairs. And again, we're going to go for logs. We'll go for ash, why not? The ceiling we're definitely going to make out of stone. Oh, someone's given birth to a boy. One of the medics has given birth to a boy. Of course, all of these um, children are taking up from our population cap. Eventually, a fort can become entirely self-sustaining because you just have generations constantly growing up. And that is always nice to see when it does get to that point. I've only ever had one fort that I've seen, like, basically entire generations come and go. And literally nothing happened. It was another fortress with silver, like this one. But all of the hostile civilizations had been wiped out. Basically, all that were left were some humans and my dwarven civilization. So yeah, that was, that was pretty cool for a while, but uh, it gets boring after a little bit. Someone, a surf, is stumbling around obliviously. That's not too good. But uh, once this floor is finished, before we finish construction of the upstairs, we can actually build our tavern. Which doesn't need much, it needs some tables, it'll need um, probably a still, just for the visual effect of it looking like a tavern. And that'll, uh, that'll be about it. And we're really close to having it done. This upstairs will look a lot better once... Um, Once we're done with it. And we could still manage to make some rooms, but they'd be tiny little, basically like, uh, cupboard rooms. We might still do that anyway. In fact, there's a good chance we're going to do that anyway. Just so we can, uh, have rooms. Looks like more people are stumbling around obliviously. And he's now not smelting Galena all because of that. Which really, really sucks. But... Finally, we can build the rest of our tavern. So we'll put the thing up in the corner there. We'll get some tables. Uh, where should we put these? You know, I think we're going to do this. We're going to put some tables. Nope, not armor stand. We're going to put some tables around the still like that. Almost like a bar. Put some bar stools around, and then uh, have like a, an area here for people to dance and tell poems, and you know, put on their performances for the bards because that is something they'll do. I imagine this is going to be one of the uh, more popular hangout spots because we are actually starting to see idlers pop up again, which isn't entirely a bad thing. And yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll build C for walls. So what we can do is finish off our exterior walls and I've just realized we're going to have to do this in a little bit of a strange way to keep access. So to stop the interior walls clashing with uh, the exterior on the up-down squares there. We're going to leave 
those last two pieces of wall to be done after the rest of it. Because otherwise, if dwarves were to complete this wall and this one before this one, they couldn't get back to do that. So they'll complete that from there, and then this wall they can complete from in there. Somebody is horrified. I'm guessing they found a corpse or something. This is not the uh, the most beautiful and aesthetic fort to uh, reside within. But here come all the tables and chairs. And I think we're even going to, we're going to assign this as a zone with I. And then... How do we do that again? I might have to double check this one online. This is the first tavern I've ever made. You know what, I think I will quickly check this on the wiki. Alright, so according to the wiki, I create a zone like I have done. I then make a meeting hall. No, not hospital. Uh, meeting hall. I then press L to assign it as a location. Locations such as taverns, temples, and libraries can be created from meeting area bedrooms. Yada, yada, yada. So we press A to add location. We make this I. So this is the Breakfast of Eggs, which is our tavern, which is a really, really kind of strange name for it. I've seen some uh, random generations of the names, and they're basically the same as the uh, fortress names, just with a few different uh, reference words, such as breakfast and eggs, apparently. But having a tavern should attract um, entertainers to the fort. And they should keep people happier. Did they suspend construction? Nope, just inactive. One of the druids should uh, come and make that at some point. Wait, is the human going to build the tavern or is he just hanging out up here? Yeah, it looks like people are just hanging out up here for now. Better than them hanging out in um, the crypts. That was a bit strange. If we're being honest. Now hopefully in the long term. I say this will uh, bring in entertainers. And it will raise the mood up of the fort. It will stop us having so many tantrums and bad moods. What are all my druids doing right now? Brew drink, have drink, prepare meal. So I think uh, when we do eventually get that migrant wave, we're going to need some more druids. Druids and serfs, that's what we're lacking. I do like this idea of the bar and then like the... Uh, I know we can't actually build one, but I would like to imagine that um, this area down here is kind of a stage with the stairs behind a curtain or something that leads up to the second floor which is where the performers and such will be uh, kept when they're here. Yeah, I really like the way these wooden walls look too. This is dope. Oh no, a surf was stung by a honeybee. That's the point. I wonder if we can... Uh Press any honey, yes. Yes, we can. Jeez, that is a lot of chickens. Definitely need more serfs and druids. So, let's actually take a look and see if there's anyone we can reassign. We have 87 dwarves. 10 children. Ew, gross. Bunch of other guys. You know what? Fisher dwarves. We're going to assign these. Two of them to be druids. And two of them we're going to assign to be serfs. Let's keep looking around. We have 26 people in the military. Two lumber dwarves. Four medici. Noble. Three miners. I think I need to keep those. 
and then two masons. I think that's acceptable. But we've had another child born to one of the druids, actually. So there we are. Having uh, a couple more druids and a couple more serfs should hopefully speed things along, especially for the druids. Because they have a lot of duties to attend to. Yeah, I do uh, quite like these wooden walls. They just look a bit a bit different. Especially in this tile set. Because as I said last time, I don't... Um, yeah, I don't usually build anything out of wood. And I also... When I came back to make this tutorial series, back to Dwarf Fortress that is, this tile set wasn't available. But I tried it on recommendation. And it's, uh, it's really good. Items are inaccessible. That is A-OK. -okay. Needs what? Needs honeycomb producing material. That is fine. Mister has become a cook. Good for you. Bunch of bees around. Dead goblins down there. I love that this area is kind of expanding into a forest. Let's actually check on our underground area. How is this going? We've got cave moss, we've got young fungi wood, young goblin caps, we have dead sweet pods. Oh yeah, we'll order all the plants gathered from down here. I'm more interested in the um, fungi wood than I am with the plants, but I'm definitely going to spend a few years just um, gathering the wild plants so that I can use them as a basis for cultivating, you know, can you, do you domesticate plants? I know we, we like uh, crossbred the banana in, in the real world from this crazy kind of almost lemony looking thing with a bunch of seeds on the inside, at least on the outside it looked kind of like a lemon into what it is now. It used to be quite different. Awesome, spring has arrived. Is that druid gathering plants already? He might be. And they've made the bar back there, which just looks cool. It just looks good. I like it. Skunk man, mace man. I want that man. I want a skunk man. That sounds amazing. Give me three of those. Who wouldn't want a skunk man? Actually, I can think of reasons that you wouldn't want a skunk man. But you know what? They're irrelevant. You're wrong. Let's go down. And uh, no, we're actually not going to bother making a bunch of wooden doors for the, the tavern. Wood is a, a display of wealth for us. So making this floor out of wood, even though the rooms are going to be tiny and pokey, the, the point of it is to show off that we're nice to our guests. And I don't think it actually has that effect, because uh, wood is not super valuable. But they're going to have uh, masterwork beds inside these rooms. Because pretty much everything we make is masterworked. So I know you can't actually build them. But I want you guys to imagine, like, up in this floor, like, the rising smoke and smell of ale from the floor below. And there's this large open plan room, but on each one, like, built into the walls, there's almost like a, um, something, somewhere between, like, a room divider and a shower curtain that you can pull across and close off your room from everybody else. So I guess, yeah, it's just a bunch of wooden, like, folding panels that you can pull across how many petitions do we have right now none apparently normally they're uh, quite quick about asking to stay what do we have down here we have a human bard nice and he's just come onto the map so this guy is going to show up with his cool instrument and he's going to entertain the dwarves and he's going to entertain the um Adventurers who are here. This is super cool. 
Oh. Interrupted by Richa. Where are you? Oh, it's down in the caves. You know what? Uh, squad C. Kill from list. Where's the Reacher? There we are. And then we'll follow this guy. I don't even know if he's gonna... Yeah, I don't even know if he's gonna need to be there. The squads, that is, because the Reacher was just wounded by a human swordsman. It looks like he's still planning on pursuing him. Did he just kill us? Or did it just die? It might have just died. Ah, oh, well. Oh, well, we'll, uh, we'll go back to the surface here. Looks like somebody has again been projectile vomiting all over our nice lead bridges. I'm sure all that lead in the water does good things for it. All that lead and vomit and dead goblins can only do good things for the quality of our water. And this floor is done. So now we need to go to the floor above. Did we get our downstairs built? We did, okay. So we're going to build flooring up here. And we'll go for blocks as best we can. And I know this looks really, really bizarre, but that's kind of what we're going for here. We're not going to be building a third story, so we're just going to fill it up as best we can. This is obviously going to take a while. But that is a okay. Need more blocks. Do we even have? Oh yeah, we've got loads of diorite blocks. All oh, right, we're gonna have to wait for that other floor to be built. Okay, that's not a problem. Cause that's gonna take a while anyway. So we're gonna have left over. We're gonna have those like three stone floored areas and those are going to be where like tavern guests stay with their wooden divider walls there's quite a few people up here being uh, i'm guessing that bard is entertaining people om spoon call let's take a look at om spoon call He is listening to a story right now. Listening to a story, listening to a story. Everyone's listening to a story. I'm not sure who's telling it. But someone in the tavern right now is telling people about that time that that thing happened and everybody laughed. Oh, I'm guessing then it's one of the soldiers who's been projectile vomiting around everywhere. Based on the fact they're all covered in projectile vomit. Which you'd think... If it's coming from one of the ranged squad, would they be proficient in projectile vomit, considering they're proficient in projectiles and biting? I'm sure if you combine those two with some kind of dwarven science, you get projectile vomit as a weapon. I can't see how that wouldn't be true. Looks like they've started construction on the uh, roof there. What's that you're building? Oh, it is, it is classed as a floor. Okay, I thought people might have been building a, uh, a wall there. That's obviously going to take them a while. But I'm really hoping that the tavern will uh, improve the mood through the fortress. Just by, once you make, um, once people start throwing tantrums, it just spreads. So we're going to try and nip that in the bud with the tavern, which was called the... What was this called again? It's called the Breakfast of Eggs. Can we rename that? Uh, no, I think we're stuck with the breakfast of eggs, which I guess is fine. It, oh, the mace skunk man. I want you... Let's take a look at this guy. I've never had, like, animal people join my fort before. So it's Afo... We're just going to call him Afo. Uh, a striped person with the head and tail of a skunk. 
He is incredibly skinny, his hair is striped black and white, his skin is dark tan, his eyes are black. Is that all we get to know about the skunk man? I guess so until we, um, like, get him in the fort. Which I'm hoping does happen, but it might not. He might not choose to stay. Oh, there was a mandate going on, was there? You want me to make three picks? I don't know, like, all we have to make picks is iron. And I don't think I want to risk the iron, waste the iron on picks when we're saving it to make armor and such out of. But we now have a tavern, which is just, I'm really excited about that. It's the first time I've made one. And it was uh, easier than I thought, because it's just a room with tables and a brewery in it. But what we are going to do is put a um, food and drink stockpile in here. Not a huge one, just um, up against the back wall maybe. Yeah, up against this wall. Two for food. And in fact, no, it's just all for food. Just a, a food stockpile so that people can um, eat and drink while they're in this tavern. Or we could even actually make upstairs the stock room, but then it doesn't count as the tavern, so... Legionnaires throwing tantrums is a dangerous business, because that's how people end up um, going berserk and getting killed. We can now order the rest of this floor done. Because we have a, a solid connection throughout it all. And I know this looks weird as hell. But uh, I kind of like it anyway. You know, I've just realized what we could do to actually do that, we could put wooden doors there and there to make that kind of... De we're doing it. We're going to make our wooden... Crazy wooden things. Carpenter. Profile, work orders, door. Yeah, give me, um, let's give me 25. 25 is a solid number to make of anything. Especially with all that lumber we have. We can afford to do it, I think. Mincot has become a gelder. Good for you. Someone is resting their injury. Oh, reporting crimes. Oh. Looks like Kib is... Oh. Yep, Legionnaires are fighting again. Can we go to the justice screen? Disorderly conduct. Building destruction. You know what? We're gonna... We're gonna... Convict that surf. We're definitely gonna convict Kib. Because that's uh, that's the second time I've seen his name pop up injuring other legionnaires. Guy's just a bit of a dick. Still slaughtering a bunch of those cats and chickens. An elven diplomat. Ugh. We haven't none of that, thank you. He's probably coming to ask us to stop cutting down trees and we're going to tell him to uh, politely... Just ever so politely, we're going to tell him that for every um, every word he speaks, we're going to burn down a forest and slaughter an elven hall. So to choose his words carefully, because each one is costing the lives of a civilization. Now, can I build a wall there? No. Okay, that could be an issue. So I think what we're going to have to do is actually remove that and that area and build walls there. Just out of wood again, and then we can install all of the doors and make that kind of, um, yeah, like folding, folding thing I was talking about. That just sounds pretty cool to me. It's going to make these rooms awful, and no one's, like, hopefully no one takes them permanently. We have much to discuss. Well, there's an entire, that's basically an entire continent's worth of trees gone. We elves are partial in particular to the trees in the forest surrounding your lands. Although we are loath to spare even a single branch to your senseless slaughter, we are willing to ask that you cap your tree fells at 100 until next time we meet. We cannot stop production just because of your quaint sensibilities. 
Although we do not always see eye to eye. Ha! I bid you farewell. May you someday embrace nature as you embrace rocks and mud. I will embrace the corpses of your people, you arrogant little douche nozzle. Let's see, has anyone actually been fighting anything yet? Uh, just more legionnaires fighting. And the druid. Oh, that, that poor druid. That is not going to go well if a legionnaire is fighting a druid. An elven caravan has arrived. Well, they can keep moseying on past. Because we want nothing to do with them. Let's see here. Where is the hospital? So we actually have a couple of guys in our hospital being treated right now. Luckily the Medici are there. A human cost Roman is dehydrated. I don't really see how that's my problem. I... As, as a Dwarven Overlord of this city, I care little for the monster hunters who come here. They're welcome to seek glory. But uh, then we're not going to babysit them while they do it. Except the Skunk Man. We will literally burn this fort to the ground for the Skunk Man. You know what, let's uh, bring up the Dwarf Therapist here. Let's have a read and let's see how the fortress's mood is in general. It looks like for the most part people are fine. Which is exactly as you'd think. We have a few who are unhappy and then one or two who are just miserable. And I guess we're just going to have to deal with that. Let's see, how are the doors coming for the, the wood? Looks like they haven't started on the wooden doors yet. Is that... That is a bird up on top of the walls that have no stairs to get up to. Because that one was just a single layered high, like, fear barrier. Whereas the outer walls are actual defensible. Why is that not done? How long have we had an unfinished wall up there? Oh well, I'm guessing somebody's seen that a couple episodes and uh, was wondering how long it would take me to fix. Mincott has become a wrestler. Good for him. Let's see, we have a bunch of things in the merchants, uh, a bunch of wild animals, and a bunch of people just listening to stories, including Afo. Afo the skunk man, who will join us. He has no choice in the matter. Even if I have to lock the doors to the tavern and force them to stay, Afo is a member of the fortress now. Oh no, stung by a bee. You poor cat. So I finally got around to watching Gotham. After giving it a, a half a try when it first came out, I watched the first half of, first half of the first episode and wasn't super impressed with it. But after uh, the last couple of exposures to Batman being less and less attached to the character, I decided to give Gotham a look because obviously Gotham is just Gotham City pre-Batman focusing around uh, Jim Gordon in his earlier days of his career. And actually, it's real good. Although it does do a lot of kind of uh, a lot of fan service, dropping in a bunch of like Batman's rogue gallery in their younger days as kids. And I'm most of the way through the first season now. I think I've just met, um, I know I've met Ivy, I know I've met Catwoman, um, met a couple others. I think I've just met the Joker as a kid and I'm not sure how I feel about Gotham doing its own thing with that. That other kid was just really creepy and they were just doing like a head nod to the Joker. We'll see. So yeah, it looks like the tavern's quite popular. And uh, I'm hoping that brings up the mood. That's where the elven diplomat is right now, talking to the skunk man. Yeah, you don't give Apo any trouble or uh, everyone in the tavern's going to beat you up. I mean, we, we pretty much want to anyway, because he's an elf. And he deserves it. But... Uh, don't know if we're actually going to be able to. We could, if we wanted to, start a war with the elves. I will show you how um, that kind of thing works when I get time. 
and when we have uh, more dwarves and a stronger military. So we're going to get our walls. And this is going to mean this room is literally going to be a bed. So whoever gets like these bottom rooms is just even worse off than the other guys who so will at least have a little bit of room on their bed. But I don't actually expect anyone to sleep up here. These rooms are just going to be for sure. I should probably get a hatch cover too. In fact, I should probably get 10 or so hatch covers. Something I have been putting off for a while. Let's go here. Mason's workshop. Profile. New orders. Hatch cover. Give me 25. I love the number 25. It is the best number. I don't know why I'm unreasonably attached to the number 25 when it comes to Dwarf Forest, but I am. It looks like, uh, yeah, people have abandoned the dining hall in favor of the tavern. I can't say I blame them. There is a bard in there, and of course, it's where Afo lives. At least for now. So we're going to get on with building our doors, hopefully. As, yeah, there's a few. So we can get uh, those ashen doors down there as well. Let's see how this looks when it's done. I think all of those were... Uh, Oh, that was a firelight door, okay. Oh, what's going on? There we are. So, build door. And then I guess we'll have to wait to do the next ones. But that should be cool when it's done. And then the hatch covers will just stop rain and puke coming down from up above. And uh, they would stop, like, you know, the giant rock. At least for a short time. I didn't build any hatch covers, did I? No. Yeah, I don't have any hatch covers. At least not yet. Would be nice to get this tavern finished before the end of this episode. Get the, uh, like I said, this upstairs is mostly not actually going to serve a purpose. Looks like we're still making a bunch of cabinets. Corpse pile is ever increasing. Looks like legionnaires have stopped fighting for now. What do we have down in the caverns? Just a single pond grabber. Yeah, things are progressing at a pretty reasonable pace. What civilizations are near us? So you press C to get to this map, wiggle ourselves around a bit. That's us there, that little uh, onk sign. We are the watchful walls. Civilization is the coincidental board. And we are the Dwarven Fortress of Revered Ring. Now, all the way down here is an evil biome. And that's a Dark Goblin Fortress. And it looks like it has a population of 30. So that's going to be our target for war when we get there. But we have a lot of preparations to do before we can go to war. Because to send out your dwarves on expeditions like that, they're going to need backpacks and um, water skins to carry their equipment and their food. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop down to our leather worker. We're going to go in and we're going to order the construction of 100 backpacks. We're also going to order the construction of 100 water skins. Now this is more than our soldiers need, but that means if any of the other dwarves in the fortress pick any up, they're welcome to have them. We're slaughtering a bunch of cats and chickens, so we should hopefully have the leather to do it. Yeah, I do. I like that slider, slider door arrangement. Like I said, these aren't actually going to be bedrooms. But they're going to be cool. 
There's um there was there is a museum near me called um, Beamish Museum, up in the uh, the northeast of England, and it has um, some really really old old things. Like there's an old watchtower from back when the England and the Scots were at war, and it was mostly there to deal with the border reavers. Uh, for those of you who don't know, England and Scotland love to fight. We're basically an old married couple, and. Uh, the people who were stuck in the middle, who were being raided by both sides, because nobody, like, it was unclaimed land, it was no man's land, nobody could hold it, so everyone was constantly just burning it down. So this kind of pseudo-nation of uh, the border people started to just raid both sides back. So there was watchtowers built that were mostly to deal with the borders, not the, um, not the Scots themselves, and it still stands as part of this museum, including some of the original furniture, and uh, back in those days, corridors or, um, yeah, corridors and like weren't really a thing. You wouldn't waste floor space like that. So bedrooms were often through rooms. So you would walk through someone's bedroom to get to wherever you were going. So beds would often have like shutters or curtains on them. That's where the four poster bed comes from. There's a boring fact that has nothing to do with anything for you. But that's basically what I'm picturing with these things is something akin to that, but with a little bit of floor space on some of them. We have bayberry. We have a lot of trees going here now. We need one more type of wooden door, and then we'll be done with doors up there. And that crazy, crazy bit will be done. Where's my skunk man? Are we still in there? Good. How big are you, skunk man? What are you equipped with? Skunk man. Let's see, you have a bronze shield, a copper morning star, a jaguar leather loincloth. A wolf leather skirt, copper chain leggings, copper mail shirt, bronze helmet, bronze gauntlets. This is the most rad thing. It's based. I'm now picturing this guy as being like, um, seeing as we were just on the topic of Scots, I'm picturing that, that skirt and loincloth as being more like a kilt. So it's just head to toe in this chain mail with his gauntlets and his shield and his morning star. But then he's just swearing at people in Scottish while his kilt's over the top of it. Being from the north of England, I am closer to uh, closer to the Scots than I am to like London. So I actually quite like the Scots. This is going well. So we've actually got our tavern complete. There's just a couple of uh, sliders to be put on, interrupted by Cave Crocodile. Well, let's finish up this episode. It's going to be a short one because I have a few things to do. But we'll finish off by killing a Cave Crocodile. And then hopefully next episode we'll have all of those um, leather things built. And we can start going on to... Um, how you interact with the larger world from your fortress. Oh, that guy is, oh, the craft lord punched the, okay, so that guy is gonna have to go to the hospital, but it looks like he's actually winning that fight with the cave crocodile. Yeah, he's chasing it down. The craft lord is just beating the crap out of a cave crocodile. This dude is a maniac. Yeah, he's leaving now, after he's beat the cave crocodile into, like, unconsciousness. Just three pages of the craft lord beating the crap out of a cave crocodile. That guy can go to hospital. And then a soldier's gonna come along and... Jesus, that's... That went from three pages... Oh, no, that's the, that's the legionnaire. Yeah, they, they uh... Wow, I can't believe that just happened. The cave crocodile just got its ass beat. Oh. Oh, jeez. So this is what we're going to finish up on. 
It has fire. Oh, gee. The Forgotten Beast, Utesh, has come. A gigantic, eyeless, six-legged hadrosaurid. It has a bloated body. Its ash-gray scales are small and overlapping. Beware its fire. So, Forgotten Beasts come from the time before time, which is essentially before recorded record. And, oh, it's an uninvited guest. They are weird amalgamations of parts when the gods were experimenting and seeing what they could make, and they're kind of this chaotic, randomly generated clash. So our first Forgotten Beast is here. We are, we are going to set a military alert. We're gonna jump to, I don't know, this druid. We're gonna follow our stairs down. I still need to set up hotkeys to get to each uh, location. We are gonna motion for squads A, B, and C to gather in Squad C's barracks, and we are going to fight the Forgotten Beast. This is a fight that we are going to play out in uh, more detail than most. We're going to find out what happens. Um, yeah, let's actually follow our Forgotten Beast, see how much time we have. Oh, wow, that is rad looking. Now, it is going to uh, beeline for us, I think. Can it swim? Oh god, it can swim? That is terrifying. There is a lot of uh, tasks being turned off right now, but we can deal with that. Where's it going? Is it disappearing off into nothing? I don't know where we are in relation to this. We've lost sight of it. Okay. So we're up on like... Yeah, we're down five or six floors from that. But it does seem like it might have been coming in our direction. As soon as I can find our direction. That seems like it's a clue that we're around here somewhere. There are rotting bodies. <laughs> Uh, you know, let's just do this the easy way. And then I think what we're actually going to do, we're going to order all three squads to kill from list. Can we find the Forgotten Beast? No. We're going to wait just a while and see if the got Forgotten Beast resurfaces. Obviously our monster hunters are still going out into the caves. So they might um, find or encounter it for us. I would like to uh, fight this thing before... Before the episode ends, let's follow that. Uh, is that the elf pikeman with his iron pike? I'm sure we've uh, fought beside that guy a few times, and that he's an absolute beast. Is it back on the map? Nope. So uh, these guys just randomly explore, which is fine. The merchants will be leaving soon. No water source. Ah, they're going to run out of water and things, aren't they? We'll give this another minute or so to see if it shows up. And if not, we might have to come up with another plan. I, I assume it's going to come out of the pond somewhere. But it's a matter of uh, waiting for this guy to pop up. So I think for now, we're going to uh, undo our alert. We're going to undo our stations. And when it pops back up, we can uh, we can deal with it then. Squad C is still down there. I would not want to send them against a the Forgotten Beast on their own, especially not with fire. As fire can uh, melt your dwarves' limbs. 
But what I'm hoping is that one of these guys finds it first. That is pretty much their purpose after all. And that's assuming it comes for us at all, right? Like, it might not. I don't think I've ever seen a Forgotten Beast not attack a fort once it's seen them. But it might not actually find us for a while. Experiencing emotional shock. That, that happens a lot. You get used to it here. But folks, seeing as that uh, Forgotten Beast seems to have forgotten about us, we're going to leave it alone for the time being. And we'll end this episode here. As always, thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye -bye.